You have decided on contacts instead of glasses. You have decided on soft contact lenses instead of gas permeable ones. The decision making doesn't stop there. In this episode of OcuTalk, optometrist Ryan Court will be discussing the distinct types of soft contact lenses, including spherical, multifocal, and toric, and the reasons why you may need one versus the other. Dr. Court? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to OcuTalk. Today, we're going to be talking with Ryan Court uh, with North Lake Eye out of Asheville, North Carolina. Dr. Court, how are you? I'm doing great. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, well, we're happy to have you. Uh, good to see that you're up in the Asheville area. It's a very nice uh, area of the country. So why don't we uh, start with a little bit of background? Um, so we talked about North Lake Eye just in terms of where it's located, but let's talk about uh, your practice and your history. Yeah, so I mean, I'll, I'll even wind things back up to kind of my history. I was born and raised in Metro Detroit, and I went to Michigan State for undergrad, the Ohio State University College of Optometry for optometry school, and then I did my residency in primary care and ocular disease at the Illinois College of Optometry. And then in 2013, I, I relocated to North Carolina, actually Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, had the opportunity to to get involved and, and start seeing patients and in 2017, I uh, was one of the co-founders of North Lake Eye with um, my business partner. Her name is Dr. Rachel Rubel, and we now have four office locations, so two in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and two in the Asheville, North Carolina area, and we provide full scope, comprehensive care, and uh, you know fit a lot of contact lenses, which I know we're going to just dive into today. Well, I'm, I'm happy to, that you brought that up uh, because we are, in fact, going to be talking about contact lenses today. And, and specifically, one of the things that we wanted to dive into today is just the different types of contact lenses. We've talked about contact lenses numerous times on this channel. We've even talked about the different uh, types of contact lenses, but we've never really done a deep dive into re what really differentiates the, uh, the different types of lenses. So uh, so let's start out by talking. Maybe we can just list the, uh, the different types of lenses. And I know that that's uh, very broad because there are common ones and then there are some that are not so common. But can we just talk generally about the different types of lenses first without getting into too much detail? Yeah, I mean, to, to break it down very basic, there are soft and hard contact lenses. And then there's a hybrid contact lens, which is a combination of hard and soft. And then in regards to soft contact lenses, there are spherical. There are torque, which is contact lenses for astigmatism. And then there are multifocal lenses, which we'll dive into the differences of those properties. You can also get that in a hybrid and a hard contact lens. Uh, a hard contact lens can be broken up into two different categories primarily, which is your rigid gas permeable and your scleral. So um, technically, right, uh, the, the difference in those is, is obviously the size and those can be adjusted based off of the different product that uh, your optometrist fits. But that's in a nutshell the, the main types of contact lenses that are out there. So when you talk about aspherical, is that what's referred to as single vision contact lenses? Uh, or is that different? What, when, when somebody says single vision contact lens, what are they talking about? Single vision contact lenses are spherical contact lenses that are correcting for a patient's myopia, which is typically supported with a minus number in front or minus sign in front of the number on a person's prescription or uh, farsightedness, which is typically supported with a plus number in front of the patient's prescription. Those can also be considered nearsightedness, which is also known as myopia and farsightedness, which is known as hyperopia. And essentially it's the same power throughout the contact lens. So there's no uh, difference in the way the lens is designed and that helps the patient correct for that prescription. So would you say that the, those single vision lenses are, represent the majority of, of lenses or uh, is it sort of a, an even split there? It depends on the practice, but I would say it's the most common type of soft contact lens fit. So if there's a single vision, uh, I've also heard of a multifocal, and I think we all are familiar with those in terms of glasses, right? Like you've seen the glasses that have the little line, there's a different lens sort of on the uh, lower part of the lens. How does that work in terms of uh, contact lenses? Is there such things as multifocal contact lenses? And, and how are they 
how are they shaped? Is it similar to the way that you would do it in uh, just a regular pair of uh, frames? Yeah, so they have what's called an aspheric shape, meaning it's not spherical. So that lens design is designed to help our patients that are presbyopic. So over the age of 40, 45-ish, some people, um, you know, kind of need those demands a little bit earlier. But typically, I would say 38 to 45 is a good range when patients start to consider multifocal lenses. They're designed to help patients that have presbyopia, which is losing the ability to accommodate or focus the lens of the eye to help them see up close. And so in doing so, they help those patients see in the distance, they help those patients see up close, and they help those patients focus in at an intermediate distance. Uh, but they are designed differently than a, than a spherical contact lens that you had referenced earlier. So with those contact lenses, uh, a multifocal, and this has been a, a curiosity of, of my own. So again, like when you're looking at a multifocal uh, eyeglass, right, like you can clearly see that there is a different power there, right? Is yes. that similar to the way that it's working on a multifocal lens? Is there a, a different power at different locations or, or is it per eye? How does that work? Yeah. So your per, so multifocal lenses and glasses are known as progressives. And so the way that that power shifts across the lens, the top of the lens gives you your distance, the middle of the lens gives you your intermediate, and the bottom gives you your near. Now, there's something called a corridor, or kind of the sweet spot of a progressive lens that a patient has to get used to and adapt to looking through, because essentially to get rid of the line in the lens, which is a bifocal product, right? So a bifocal just has a distance power and a near power. To get rid of that line and give intermediate power, the lens has to provide power in a unique way. You can't just have it all the way across the lens. There is kind of a sweet spot or a corridor that allows those patients to get used to it. On the other side of the equation, your multifocal contact lenses and the vast majority of your multifocal contact lenses in the market nowadays are what's called center near designs. So the very center of the lens gives you your power for near. And as you go out radially in a circular pattern, it shifts from near to intermediate, to distance. And so it's just designed differently. And that's this is all on a soft contact lens, um, but it's designed differently so that your patients are able to, when looking up close, they look through the center of the lens and as they shift down to the distance, the brain takes a signal in the radially out, right? In the intermediate and near power is required. So for somebody that, uh, in, 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 uh, candidly, multifocus is something we haven't talked about a lot on this channel. But for somebody that was considering multifocal lenses, this isn't like something that I'm making like a conscious decision to look here or look here uh, when I'm yeah. looking for distance, right? Like it, it's just, it just happens uh, for lack of a better term. The brain gets used to the signal that it needs to take into consideration for the patient to see. So there is, is definitely a learning curve on that. Some patients, they pop them on their eyes, they're able to look up close, look into the distance, assuming that it was fit appropriately based off the fitting guide of the manufacturer and dialed into what they need. Um, some patients adapt much quicker than others, but there is a learning curve, just like a pair of progressive glasses though, right? There's a learning curve in getting used to kind of tilting your head up and down to find the sweet spot um, for depending on where you're looking at and looking up and down the lens. So uh, another thing that we've talked about on this channel before is toric lenses. And we've had it explained to us that there are uh, a very kind of a similar thing going on with toric, that there are different um, powers, if you will, in different sections. But how does that differ from what we're describing here in a multifocal lens? Yeah, so a toric contact lens is used to correct for a condition called astigmatism. Astigmatism is essentially a different, well, it can be presented in the eye in two different ways, in the cornea, which is the vast majority of cases, and then you can have what's called lenticular stigmatism, which is the crystalline lens of the eye. And patients that have astigmatism have two different curvatures, most commonly in their cornea. And so those curvatures need different power requirements to effectively allow the patient to get a clear image in the back of their eye sent to their brain. And so we have to have contact lenses for astigmatism known as toric contact lenses that correct for those two different power requirements. Another way to think about it is, is, is if an eye without astigmatism is shaped more kind of round like a ball, has the same curvature throughout the cornea, uh, an eye that has astigmatism is shaped more like a football, American football, right? Two different curvatures. And so we have to correct for those two different imbalances in the cornea to allow light to get to the back of the eye cleanly for the patient to see. 
You know, uh, as a quick aside, I've heard uh, before, and maybe you can validate this, that um, the level, or I guess the percentage of the population that has astigmatism varies based uh, regionally, but that here in the United States, uh, it is actually quite prevalent for people to have astigmatism. Is is that true? Yeah, I mean, definitely regionally, and, and just based off of the the demographics of the region, um, some areas have more patients for it than with astigmatism and higher degrees of astigmatism than others. I can't really comment on outside the United States, but um, I will tell you that astigmatism is extremely prevalent in my clinic. And in a lot of the clinics with the colleagues that I communicate with. So when when somebody has astigmatism, is a toric lens the only option for them? Depends on the degree of astigmatism, right? So if the second number in a prescription, so a, a prescription for astigmatism has three different numbers. The first number is the spherical number. The second number is the cylindrical number or the power of the astigmatism. And the third number is known as the axis or the location of the astigmatism. If the patient has that second number and it's minus a quarter, minus 0 0.25, minus a half, minus 0 0.50, we don't need to correct for that degree of astigmatism in a contact lens. So some patients with astigmatism actually aren't fit in contact lenses for astigmatism. But once you hit that minus 0 0.75 or minus three quarters amount, we have contact lens solutions that are designed to provide those patients with better clarity. That's known as a clinically significant amount of astigmatism to correct for in a toric or contact lens for astigmatism. And so, no, it's not their only solution or option, but once they reach that clinically significant degree or amount, it's the ideal solution. So what you're describing with toric lenses, right? Like there's, you can go from a minus power to a plus power, and then plus you've got these other three axes here. It seems like there is a lot of different variations of toric lenses. <laughs> yeah, those are known as skews and uh, parameters, right? So you want to know like what, what parameters does a contact lens manufacturer have? And each parameter is known as an individual skew. And long story short, yes, you can make a several combinations of plus and minus power. So correcting for patients that have hyperopia or five-sided and have astigmatism, correcting for patients that have myopia or nearsighted and have astigmatism. And oh, by the way, you can throw into that whole equation, the condition of presbyopia, right? And needing to be able to focus in up close. And we have a lot of different tools in our toolbox to address nearsighted and farsightedness and astigmatism. We have a lot of different tools in our toolbox to address also presbyopia. Um, but we have just a few solutions to correct patients that have all of those factors combined. And so, you know, your eye care professional is trained to select the best power and the best contact lens based off of your particular degree of astigmatism. Um, and sometimes, you know, it, some patients show up with a, a higher amount of astigmatism or a location that doesn't, isn't supported in, in all the main manufacturers. And then you have to order more of a specialty product. And there are some specialty products out there in the marketplace that support patients that are outside the bell curve of, of power ranges. So is it harder to fit uh, a patient for some of these uh, different lenses like a toric versus a, a, a multifocal for you as a, as a doctor? Is it harder to fit these? Easiest to fit a spherical lens. I would say a toric lens is, in my opinion, just as easy. Multifocals, there's an art to it. It's, it's framing the conversation, not over-promising to your patient that they're going to be 100% satisfied in, in every environment and lighting condition and making sure that you, you know, start with a refresh refraction and follow the fitting guide that was outlined by the manufacturer. So some doctors opt into fitting multifocals uh, more than others, for sure. And then, of course, you know, once you get into the more of the specialty products, that gets a little bit more niche as well and, and less doctors support those products too. So when it comes to contacts nowadays, I, I know uh, in the past, and every year they're coming out with new contacts, um, but in the past, uh, you know, we didn't have daily disposables, now we do. We didn't have Torix, now we do. Uh, like, I remember when I was a kid, if you had astigmatism, just contacts were out for you, right? Uh, so clearly we're, we're, we're developing and we're moving forward with contact lenses. Are there any particular... Um, groups of people today that aren't good fits for contact lenses that you would say, I don't have a solution for this particular problem. Obviously there are people that can't fit contact lenses, but talking about just the general public here, um, you know, are there any uh, vision disorders that can't be corrected uh, with contact lenses today? You know, a lot of vision disorders can be corrected 
or with contact lenses. I, you know, a lot of times the, the greatest limitation to a patient wearing contact lenses is I ask all my patients, you know, what are your, what is your interest level in contact lenses on a scale of one to 10? And the ones that are not interested will say a zero. I don't want to mess with them at all. And it comes down to usually a phobia or they want to bring something close to their eye. But if patients are, yeah, there you go. If, if somebody is patient enough and they're willing and they're, and they're motivated to try, we can correct the overwhelming majority of, of prescription requirements to a certain degree, not perfect, but, um, you know, get them in, in a very functional visual category where they're happy. And, um, you know, I like to call those patients 20 happy. We can get you as good as we possibly can. We can't make it perfect, but it really does improve their quality of life because they don't have to worry about other visual solutions like glasses and, and, uh, you know, other, other things like surgery. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think it's important to note that, uh, especially when they're manufacturing either glasses or contacts, right? Like they're, they're you're always going to be put into some bucket, right? Like uh, all of these, like uh, some people may be, you know, point this or point that, but there's always a cutoff of a bucket that you're going to be in. So like you said, uh, it's going to be much better than it was and pretty close to exactly what you need. But in order for a manufacturer to make every individual power for every person, it's just not really feasible. Yep. And, you know, the other things to consider is always the eye health of the patients. So if they have significantly advanced ocular surface disease and, and, you know, that's impacting their ability to even wear the lenses, um, that can be a challenge. You know, scleral contact lenses can be used to help with patients that have advanced dry eye disease. But if, you know, they have overwhelming amount of blepharitis and things that are getting into the tear film, that could be a challenge, right? So those patients, the ones that you know, the ocular surface of the front of the eye, there's just some underlying condition that is being, you know, it's difficult to manage. Uh, that could also eliminate, eliminate their ability to wear contacts as well. Right, right. Well, and, and uh, as a doctor, though, those are things that you can address as well. <laughs> 100%, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, are there any uh, anything else that we want to share about contact lenses? Yeah. So, you know, another interesting thing that's taking place and in, in picking up a lot more traction in optometry is myopia control. And so there are soft contact lenses designed similar to what the designs are for a, a multifocal contact lens um, to help reduce the rate of progression of myopia or nearsightedness. And so we tend to identify those patients uh, you know, there's a particular age range, but, you know, earlier on in life, significantly earlier on in life and fit and prescribe them and, and reduce that, that overall progression of myopia. And, and so that's an interesting and exciting category. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think uh, we've been doing a lot on contact lenses on the channel. And that's one thing I'm, I'm learning more and more is that um, there are solutions uh, for many of these things. So like you said, some are more challenging than others, uh, but there are solutions uh, available for them and, and more coming out every day. Uh, so I think for those of us with uh, vision uh, problems today, uh, even if there's not a solution today, stay tuned because there are new things coming out every single day. But it's really valuable to go and talk with your optometrist and just see because, uh, again, if I were thinking from when I was a kid, I would think I can't wear contact lenses, but that's false, right? Uh, the, there are lenses available for people nowadays. Um, so absolutely go and have the conversation if it's something you're willing and able to do um, and, and see what's available. You nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dr. Court, thank you so much for being with us today. This has been a very interesting conversation, and uh, I'll look forward to talking to you uh, again in the future. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really proud of what you guys are doing and educating everybody on a lot that's going on in, in the field of, of, of optometry and, and different solutions that we have for them and their eye health and vision care. So thank you.